Hey everyone, it's Chase Ellaby and Joel Williams from Williams Ellaby and today we're going to talk to you about what to expect when you have a consultation with an injury lawyer. So Joel, we get people to call the office all the time, say they've been you know, in a car wreck, slip and fall. What's the next steps when we get that call and what's that consultation like? Yeah, so I, I know it can be daunting and kind of nerve wracking to even think about having to call a lawyer sometimes. Heck, that might be why you're watching this video right now. It's right. just because it's something you're nervous about. Um, and I get it, like it's something, especially if you've never been through this process before, it's something that um, is new to you. It's something that you don't know what to expect. So hopefully this video helps out a little bit with that. So the very first thing I would say is it's, if you go to the doctor's office, you're probably gonna have some forms to fill out, right? right. They're gonna ask your name, your date of birth, uh, what's bothering you, what all these different things. But when you go to an injury lawyer's office, let's just presume it's for a, a car wreck you're in. It's gonna ask about your name and your pertinence, you know, where do you live, your phone number, all that. About the wreck, about car insurance information, if you have any health insurance information, um, about your medical condition, like what's hurt in the wreck or what did you hurt in the wreck? Have you ever had injuries to that part of your body before? All those kind of things. So, you know, if you go ahead and get that information together ahead of time, um, it might help move the process along when you're meeting with a personal injury lawyer. Yeah, that's right. And so typically when you call, like if you call our office, for instance, you're going to talk to one of our paralegals and staff just to kind of get that general information. And usually if Joel or myself or Jared, another lawyer available, um, we'll get on the phone and we'll talk to you, right? And we typically will just sort of ask the same questions just to get an idea of what the situation is, right? What, what are you calling for? Is it something we can even help with? Now, for me personally, my job or one of the things I try to do the, the most is to educate people who call, even if they don't sign up with me, um, just to educate them on their options, what they're looking at, um, what it looks like in the future. Again, I always kind of fall back to the car, car wrecks because those are probably what we get most calls on because they happen so frequently. But we get a lot of questions from, you know, first timers who have no idea, you know, what to do. Like the wreck had happened a couple of days ago. They don't even know if they should go to the doctor, who they should go to, health insurance, you know, car insurance, all this, all these, you know, confusing questions and things. They have no idea what to do. So my goal in almost all uh, initial consultations is just to educate the clients. Not, I'm not a sales guy. I don't sell anything. It's just to let them know what their options are. Yeah, but you don't necessarily. If you're not calling our firm or a firm that operates like us, you might expect to get the sales pitch. Oh, for sure. Yeah, um, for sure. Because everybody doesn't operate that way, and yeah. some people will put on the high pressure uh, sales pitch to try to get you to sign with them, and that's just the way they do business. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, right. um, it's just their business model. Um, now, one thing that you should also expect when you're trying to schedule a consultation with a personal injury attorney is that that consultation should be free. Most personal injury attorneys are going to offer that free initial consultation because we operate off of what we call a contingency fee basis, which means that we only get paid if we get a recovery for you. So it's kind of funny to me when I see lawyer advertising, it's lawyer advertising that says something like, um, you zero cost, you owe us nothing unless we win. Okay. Yeah. Like every personal injury That's attorney awesome. that I know is that way. Right. Uh, so it's not unique, but it, it's unique to personal injury law, but it's not unique to a certain firm. So you can rest assured that if a personal injury law firm tries to charge you a retainer just to have an initial consultation for a personal injury case, that is way outside the norm. And you should probably look further to find a lawyer that will give you that free consultation. Yeah, that's right. And there's hardly, I mean, with our firm and most firms, there's not going to be a retainer. Um, and there's not going to be any upfront like case expenses or things like that, right? Another question we always get is, okay, you know, when I go look to hire a lawyer, I know I have to pay for the fees, but what about the filing fees, the deposition costs, all the type of stuff where if you were to pursue a case on your own, you have to spend money on all firms, most firms, I won't, I, don't, I shouldn't assume all firms, us, we don't charge our clients anything for that stuff. We advance that money. It's part of the case expenses and the case is successful, that money you know, gets paid back. So that's another thing you wanna ask when you're in a consultation is, okay, well, how's my case funded? Are you using your money, your firm's money? Are you financing the cases? Am I, having, am I gonna have to pay your interest if you're financing the cases 
um, from you know borrowed money? Those are very important questions to ask. Yeah, um, and I would say too. I, I think we probably skipped over this this step, but that initial consultation we like when possible to meet somebody face to face and sit down with them. We, we just are of the opinion there's still a lot of value in a handshake and being able to look somebody in the eye and make sure that that our firm is the right fit for you and that you're the right fit for our firm. That's just the way we operate. Um, sometimes that's not possible and right. we have to do uh, Zoom consultations um, and that's fine. And then sometimes it's phone consultations in rare circumstances with our, with our firm. But that doesn't mean that every other personal injury lawyer works the same way. A lot of them are exclusively uh, phone consultations and they'll send you a DocuSign contract mm -hmm. to sign. Um, some only do Zoom, some only do in person. So the method by which you have that consultation may vary from firm to firm. That's right, yeah. I mean, it, and it's convenience for the client, at least from our, you know, how we operate. We'd love to have everyone come in, but sometimes it's just not possible, so. Yeah. Um, another thing that should happen during the consultation is there's going to be, you're, not, you're never going to go to a lawyer's office without signing paperwork, right? right? Especially if you hire that lawyer. There's going to be a contract that you'll need to sign with that lawyer's firm. Uh, for personal injury cases, it's going to be a contingency fee contract. And the lawyer should absolutely 100% every time should go over that contract with you and explain the terms of the contract so you're both on the same page. I would highly advise against signing a attorney-client contract where the attorney doesn't explain it to you and they just email it to you and, and, it, and a DocuSign and it says, sign here, you click the button and it takes you down four pages and you sign there and you never read it. That's almost always a bad idea. Yeah, and also too, without even speaking with a lawyer, right? Because a lot of times you might call a big firm and say, I just got in a wreck. It's like, okay, great, what's your email? And you'll get an email to sign a, you know, a fee agreement right off the bat and you'll have really no idea what you're signing, what it means, or anything like that, because I've seen that happen a ton of times. So always be wary of that type of stuff as well, because you don't know what you're signing, you don't know what sort of repercussions you might be, or you might have if you say, wanting to go with a different firm or whatever it might be. So be very wary of that. Yeah. Another thing to expect during that initial consultation is that everything that's discussed is confidential. Um, we have what we call the attorney-client privilege, which means that everything that's discussed between you and the lawyer or even the lawyer and someone who's seeking out their legal services is protected. So it can't be disclosed to anyone outside of the attorney's office by the attorney or their staff. Now, if, if you decide to go tell the rest of the world about it, that's on you, but you can expect that at least from the attorney's perspective that all of that show, all of that stuff should be uh, held in confidence and remain confidential. Yeah, that's right. I would say I think all in all, just when you're, I guess, lawyer shopping, for lack of a better word, trying to figure out who you're going to hire, it's important that you get a good feel of whoever it is you're talking to, right? That they're answering all the questions that you have um, and also explaining things that you might not have known. That's always a good cue to know that someone you're talking to knows what they're talking about. So just be weary, you know, um, do your research, do your homework. Videos like these are great. There's a bunch of other videos and resources out there for you. Always check websites, check reviews uh, when you're looking to hire a lawyer because I think that stuff can be very enlightening as well. Yeah, I would just say to, to sum it all up, don't be afraid to get in touch with a personal injury law firm. Mm -hmm. Uh, most personal injury lawyers are very approachable. Um, they're, they're not going to be afraid to talk to you. They're going to be more than happy to talk to you. I mean, that's how we make our living. If we didn't talk to people, it, we wouldn't right. be making a living. So um, we're more than happy to talk to you. And even if you have questions about do I even have a case, um, what should I expect, and just come ready to ask all those questions and have your questions answered and rest easy knowing that the discussions that you have with the prospective injury lawyer um, you're not going to you shouldn't be judged for the questions that you have um, and that that information should always remain confidential um, so during that initial consultation uh, if you decide to hire that attorney the attorney should explain the process to you what to expect how long this may take give you advice on you know things to do and not to do to, to help maximize the value of your case um, and help not diminish the value of your case. 
Um, and hopefully you'll be introduced to everyone that's going to be working on your case, paralegals or legal assistants, and as well as any lawyer that's going to be working on your case. Um, and then, you know, it, it's hard to box it all into one video because certainly every firm does it slightly differently. Um, but all in all, just don't be afraid to talk to an attorney because that attorney's at least going to be on your side as opposed to the insurance company that represents the person that hurt you. So, um, anything else about what to expect during a injury attorney <laughs> consultation? No, I think we've covered it all. Um, yeah, I mean, just going back to what I said before, just do your homework and make sure that whoever you're talking with, um, you're comfortable with and feel free to explain everything and ask all the questions you may have. Yep. So. All right. If this video has been helpful to you, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, we will see you next week.